Greetings, beloved. I pray that you're having a, a, a wonderful day and that you're staying awake and responding to the promptings in your heart. I want to today talk about, uh, we're still talking on this topic of, of hearing God, but I want to start by um, talking about what is, I think, the most beautiful revelation in the entire Bible, the most beautiful revelation in the entire world, in the whole universe, throughout all of history. It is that God is love. 1 John 4, 8, God is love. And then John defines for us what that love looks like. Uh, when he points us to the cross, here's what we know what love is. Don't don't guess. Don't derive it out of your own speculation, your own fancies, whatever fancies or whatever your subjective impressions. No, it, he gives us a concrete, uh, objective definition of love when he says, "Here's what we know what love is." Jesus Christ gave his life for us, and so also we should give our life uh, for one another. That's the kind of love that God is. Love isn't just a verb that God does. Love is uh, the noun that God is. Even apart from the world, God is love. And, and only the Christian faith can say that because only the Christian faith has a conception of God where there's an I and thou in God's own being. God doesn't need to create something outside of himself in order to start loving. God is love because God is in himself three persons. And um, the kind of love that those three persons share is when it gets turned outward, it looks like Calvary. But that's that, that, that God who gives himself away, he is that even within himself. It's an incredibly beautiful, fantastic revelation. No human could, could make this up. Um, it's expressed in, uh, one of the most profound ways it's expressed in Christian theology. The Cappadocians uh, came up with this, uh, with the concept of perichoresis. It denotes the mutual indwelling of the three persons of the Trinity. They completely, totally, utterly give themselves away to one another to the point where they fully dwell within one another, the three persons of the Trinity, this mutual indwelling. And see, when God relates to us, here's God's goal in creation. He wants that to be turned out, to be replicated, to be multiplied, to be refracted, as it were, throughout the creation. And so Jesus prays in John 17, Father, I pray that, that they would be in us as we are in them. I and them, they and me, I'm and you, you're and me. Uh, it's, it's the Trinity being, being turned outward, being re re reflected. The way God relates to us is to replicate the way God is within himself because God is love. And so when he relates to us, he doesn't become something different. He's just being himself towards us. Calvary is what God looks like when he's being himself to a race of sinners who are trying to push him away. Hmm. Uh, so uh, catch this. Paul says that we're in Christ and that we're loved in Christ. We're, we're loved in the beloved, Ephesians 1.6. So God's love for us isn't uh, a, something alongside of Christ. It's simultaneous with Christ. He loves Christ. The Father loves Christ perfectly, fully, uh, and par perichoretically. And we are in Christ. And so we're loved, as Jesus himself says in John 17, we're loved with the same love that the Father has for the Son. And I just internalize that for a second. You are loved with the same perfectly intense, unwavering, unfathomable, incomprehensible, unimprovable love that the Father has for the Son, because God is that kind of love. And so he's just being himself towards you. We are loved in the Beloved. Which means that we, our loving communion, communion with God participates in God's loving communion with himself. All right? Now, Paul also says that uh, the Spirit prays through us, that the Spirit searches the deep things of God. And when we're yielded to the Spirit, the Spirit searches out the deep things of God. And when we don't know what we should pray, the Spirit prays through us with groanings uh, that cannot be uttered. Which means that not only is our loving communion participating in God's loving communion, but our communication with God, when it's really authentic, it participates in God's own communication. The, we get caught up in the love of the triune God. We get caught up in this, the talk of the triune God. And then when God loves us and God brings us into a relationship, that same thing happens in us. We dwell in him and he dwells in us. So and this is what we've been saying, uh, taking Proverbs 20, verse 27 as our launching point, that God's communion with us isn't separate from our, our own communion, communion with ourselves. It's rather he participates. He communes with us as we commune with ourselves. He's part of our own self-relationality. So also, God's communication with us participates in our self-communication. -communica that's what thinking is. We're talking to ourselves. We do it all the time. Oh, that's really classy. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to. <laughs> How long has that been there? Crying out loud. 
All right, where was I? Oh, yeah. So God is communion with us. I could start over again, but I have to do the whole thing over again, and I'm excited. I don't want to lose it, so I'm going to keep going. So God's communication with us participates in our communication, uh, which is why Dallas is saying that when we hear the voice of God, we're not listening to a different voice. It's our voice. It's just, it's, a, it's our voice with God dwelling in it. Uh, we, he, he, his, he participates in our, our relationality. Mm. Now, see, that's why it's so important then that um, when, we, when we go throughout the day, that we are aware that we're dwelling in God, God's dwelling in us, and that we are participating in God's self communication as He's participating in our self communication. And so the question is, is will we go through the day uh, aware of that and listening to that voice and staying present to our communion with God? I pray that we do. That's what the kingdom is all about. We're caught up. Folks, we are caught up in the most beautiful love story. Not only that has ever been told, but it, the most beautiful love story that could ever be told because you can't fathom a more beautiful love story than this. So enjoy your day being caught up in the love story that is God from all eternity. Beautiful. Listen. Listen to the voice and act. Amen. God bless you guys. Sharon's love. See ya.